Welcome back to the Nightly Computing Studio, bringing you another tutorial today. Today we are going to talk about zenithal highlighting with the airbrush. And some of the same technique can be applied with the brush as well, but we're going to primarily talk about the airbrush because this is the easiest way to do this. So, um, just to explain a little bit about the technique, this technique is if you're kind of going for more of a realistic lighting on your model, if you want to see where the shadows and the highlights might fall before you start painting, this is a really, really great way to kind of show yourself that and, and cheat a little bit. Plus, if you're re using really thin paints and really thin colors, it'll actually help you to define a lot of those highlights and shadows before you even start putting the color on the model. So to do this uh, today, just to kind of show you guys an end result actually. So last year at Nova, I took a course from uh, CK Studios, Caleb Wissenbeck, and he talked a lot about this technique in particular, which I already kind of knew about because of some other videos, particularly Vince Ventrell's channel. He's awesome, go check him out. And uh, also the, the miniatures paintbrush. He's got some really cool technique stuff on there as well. He's taught me a lot. So um, go check out those two channels as well, CK Studios, if you want some more in depth on this. But I just wanted to show you kind of the basics of the technique and how you can achieve something like this uh, as an end product. But you can see that the model is really dark when you look at it from this way and really bright when you look at it from the top down. But here you get a lot of shadow and a lot of contrast, which looks really, really cool. So today we're going to be working on the Fulmeroid Crusher from Games Workshop's Warcry. Just happens to be the model I'm currently painting for a store competition, so that'll be fun but I wanted to shoot a little video on some of my process of painting this guy. And I thought, might as well share uh, how to do this technique since I'm gonna be doing it myself. This guy has a ton of flesh and I wanna make sure I get this right on his skin. So I kinda want to see where I wanna put the highlights before I actually go and put the highlights in. So, what we're gonna need for this technique is uh, you'll wanna prime black um, or dark gray or dark brown, just really depending on what color you're going for. If you're going for like a red eventually or something like that, or bright orange like the guy I showed you, you could do like a, a brown undercoat and various shades of brown up, um, or cream or grays, or it, it really, you could do this with anything. But the technique itself is best shown with um, the gray scale. So we're gonna go from black to gray to white. So I've just got some Vallejo game color here, cold gray and then white. Um, two really great paints. And we're going to be using them for this today. You could also use your gray and white primers for this. Um, I just want to keep the paints thin. I'm also going to use some flow improver and some airbrush thinner. So to get started here, um, the basics of this technique is simply that we're going to try to mimic the light that is coming down from the top on this model without actually having to rely on a light source from the top while we're painting. So normally you would just spray the whole thing with black and then you would come in at kind of a 45 degree angle of the model. So if you want to kind of hold the model this way, you're going to shoot kind of at a 45 across the whole model, right? So you're gonna just turn him, you're gonna do that. And then you would come in with your white, your, your brightest light point, and you're gonna go straight down from on top of the model. So this is gonna take some angles that I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to show well in this video, um, but if I don't get it right, bear with me. It's not always the easiest to angle these for videos in the airbrush booth, so. Let's go ahead and get started. Just gonna put 
some flow improver in there. Couple drops of gray, we don't really need too terribly much. Thinner here. Thin this down pretty good. I'm gonna thin that down just a tad more. You know, honestly, I've been airbrushing for a while, and I'm still trying to figure out the consistency that I like painting through the airbrush with. I just used Flow Improver for a while. Now I've started using this this thinner here, and it's it's awesome. So let's see here. We're gonna test over here. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Okay. So, we've got our gray, and we're gonna use this at a 45. So, we come in kinda of at this angle. I'm just gonna lightly start giving it a dust in here. So hopefully you can already kinda of see what this is gonna do for us. Try to keep your angles consistent as you turn the model. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do get the whole model. This is a bit of a finicky model, honestly. Should have put him on a base. kind of see here this guy has already gotten some depth to him so yeah this is this is gonna be cool I really love this model there's just something so foreboding and brutal about this guy. He has ripped his restraints off and is now wielding them against those who might captive, but put him in captivity here. So, okay, so we're going to make sure this is nice and dry. As you can see, this, this technique is, is not hard, especially with an airbrush with with a brush, it gets a, gets a bit more tricky. It's a ton of fun. So I'm going to clean out my paint here. All right, so we're back. Airbrush is all clean. So we're going to grab our, our white. Let's give it a shake here. Stick some flow improver in there. You don't need much. Crack open our white paint. Probably didn't even need that much white, but make sure we get this guy nice. Okay, we're gonna give it a little 
back blow. Mix it up all nice. Okay. So, you can see that we've already established a pretty decent highlight on this guy, which looks really nice. But what this next stage is going to do for us is it's going gonna, it's gonna to capture all of that light that's coming down and hitting these muscle groups here. It's going to hit the top of his knee for us and the foot, but it's not going to hit this one over here. So it's really going to pull in that lighting type shadow. And I'm actually probably going to come just slightly forward here. So if we're, if we're looking at him like this, I'm probably going to come down almost like that. So not quite straight down on top, but kind of kind of at a close angle here. So um, that's maybe a little splattery. White paint can be really, really tough to get right through the airbrush. So we're just going to go real, real kind of subtle here. You can already see what this is doing now. hand a little bit there. Yeah. So. As we go down his back here. see those muscles on his back are a lot darker so we can actually come through just hit those a tad and kind of brighten them up a little bit voila make sure we get that rock down there top of that Some of this you can kind of you kind of break it a little bit if you need to, uh, just to get a nice contrast built up. For the most part, like we're gonna make sure that we get his foot there, um, but not this whole front side here. So you can see kind of what that's doing for us. Really cool effect. Want a little bit more of his hand lit up, so I'm going to break that a little bit there. So for the most part, it's it's kind of a true lighting highlight, but you can also kind of play around with it and make it make it your own. Like, see, I haven't done as much to his hair because I know that his his kind of main thing here is going to be a little darker, but I, I could come back in through like that and really get that nice. You can see how much depth is already in that model before we even start putting more paint on it. And this model is just going to look incredible by the time we get done. This is a really fun sculpt from GW. I don't know who the sculptor is, but 
they did a phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. Cool. So, um, you can see the finished work here. Uh, this was a really quick, just rough zenithal highlight technique, but you can even see where it's gotten the tops of all these little tied leather straps here. It's gotten the tops of our, our belt across his chest here. There are other pieces, or one other piece to him, it's this. Um, I haven't bothered to zenithal this just simply because I'm going to paint it with metal paint and none of that is going to show through. And so I, I just tend not to, to worry too much about it. I kind of know where the light's going to hit this. So we can do that with metal paints and I, I'll show you how to do that as well later on. But yeah, for now, we're calling this guy primed. So this would be kind of the, the ending stage of, of priming your model. You're going to do this before you start putting any other paint on. And so if, we'll go from here. We'll continue in, in some more videos working on this guy, showing some, some different techniques, maybe even using some contrast paint, stuff like that. I haven't, haven't quite totally decided on everything that I'm doing for this guy, but man, he is a fun project just in the way so like i said my local store is having a competition that's what i'm painting this guy for and i actually have a patreon that's linked to this channel and we are supporting my local game store currently uh, by creating some video content and some tutorials for for you guys so if you're looking to support some local hobby stores during this time i would I really appreciate you going and checking out our Patreon. There's some really affordable options there that get you access to all kinds of different videos and more and more as I create them. So, other than that, I'd love for your support on the channel. So, you can uh, like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you liked this content. If this was helpful to you, go ahead and drop a comment and uh, tell me what you uh, found useful about the video and what you'd like to see more of love to kind of cater some of this content to you guys but this has been part of the hobby basics series so you can find more of that uh, right at the end of this video but as for now thanks for watching and hope you have a great time hobbying and maybe practicing some cynical highlighting have a great night